Modular synthesizers are crazy looking synth spaceships that can make anything from dance style EDM to ambient textures or soundscapes, depending on how you build one. Since they are so versatile and there's so many different modules out on the market, it can be really intimidating to take that plunge into the Eurorack world. So if you're looking to make that plunge anytime soon, hopefully this video can help get rid of some of the intimidation factor that comes along with it. Hi, I'm Josh Pibiaus. Welcome to my dining room. It took me four years of research to finally feel like I knew enough about Eurorack to get started and feel like I was actually going to know enough to make use out of what I had just ordered and spent all that money on. And then once I did that and I sat down in front of it, I realized how much time I'd wasted worrying if I knew enough or if I was prepared enough to really start this journey when all I needed to know was what it took to actually supply power to one and how to connect all the modules together to not blow anything up. If I had just learned that and then bought these modules, I would have realized that you're, you're always going to be learning as you go. So, to show that you don't have to be a synth genius to use one of these, I've picked three of my non-musician friends who are going to sit down at this table, look at this system that I've got set up in front of me here, and I'm going to give them a little crash course, boot camp sort of thing, and then they're going to have 30 minutes to create a patch and show it to us, and then we'll see how they do and see how they fare. If at any point in the video you wish somebody would ask something or you have a question of your own, feel free to drop in the comments down below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Let's get started. This is Drew. Hey, how's it going? This is Daniel. This is Katie. Howdy, buds. All right, so you know what's about to happen. Do you have any questions about any of this before we get started? Not yet, but I'm sure I'll have some later. Um... <laughs> no, I don't. I was trying to think of something creative, but no. None come to mind right now. All right, so what we have in front of us is just a very basic baby spaceship of a modular system. This is the Moog Mother 32 here on the left. This will be the brains of the operation. The motherboard. <laughs> Boo! Come on! <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> Uh, this is the Make Noise Maths, which is a function generator that'll let us have some movement that we can patch into other things. Uh, this is the Mutable Instruments Clouds. It's our effects unit, which we'll use to sort of spice things up and not just listen to the dry signal out of the Moog. Okay. And then here on the end, this is the Dope for, I think it's the A138 Linear Mixer. It's just to combine the stereo outputs of the clouds into one signal that we can send to Ableton. Forewarning, this is gonna feel like a lot. Oh, I believe you. There's at least 37 knobs here. The reason I say the Mother 32 is the brains of the operation is this is what actually makes noise. Uh, you can think of it as the voice, but all of these knobs, toggles, patch points can control the tone of the voice. But for just like getting started, there are four knobs that you really need to focus on. This knob, the frequency knob, changes the pitch of the note that you're playing. So this is a C. As I turn it, it becomes less of a C. Cut off, um, for simplicity's sake, you can think of it as something that just darkens or brightens the tone. Resonance makes spaceship noises. Exactly, that's resonance. Okay. And then the other one will come into play when we get into the sequencer, which is the tempo, and that'll control how fast or slow the sequence that you program is played back. Okay, down here is the sequencer. These little square buttons correlate to the keys on a keyboard. So these two are the groupings of two black keys and these three are the grouping of the three black keys, making this C and then, so one on the step sequencer is C and then eight is C, one octave up. Gotcha. Uh, and then you can press these two buttons to cycle through the octaves, so. And then it gets real low too. Oh, God. <laughs> that was awful. Okay. All right. Don't do that again. <laughs> then to actually program a sequence, you see the shift button here. Mm -hmm. You press and hold it, and then you press this one that says run stop. So if I want to record CD, those are now the first two steps in my sequence. And then to play that back, Now you're making EDM. 
And that's the basics of this. This is the Make Noise Maths. Like I said earlier, it's a function generator. You can think of it as something that is drawing sine waves. And then you can use those sine waves to patch in and control other things. Do you see these blue knobs and these blue knobs? Yes. They are the same, just mirrored. They affect different functions. Okay. Function one and function four. This is the output for function one. This is the output for function four. And then rise controls how fast you get to the top of the sine wave and fall controls how long it takes to get from that rise to the bottom. This makes perfect sense to me, actually, because of the way um, Adobe does their stuff. Their, uh, their graphs, their graph yeah. editor, so that makes perfect sense. So depending on your knowledge of math depends on how useful that is, or if it's just a little magic boy knob that you turn. Well, I took statistics and I remember them talking about exponential, but I don't remember anything about that. <laughs> so this is Clouds, uh, made by Mutable Instruments. It is our effects unit, like I said earlier. What it is technically is a granular texture synthesizer. So what it does is it records audio in its buffer. So you can view the buffer as like a tank. And it fills the tank up with audio and then it creates grains out of that. Okay. So grains are little tiny snippets that you can control the sound of. Density controls how many grains are made out of the signal. Okay. When you turn it clockwise, it generates them at a random interval. And then when you turn it counterclockwise, it generates them at a constant linear interval. Position changes the position of the start times. Size controls the size of the grains. Pitch controls the pitch of the delays. I could have such a good time. <laughs> This is what hell sounds like all the time. Very greebly. Knowing all that, how do you feel right now? Um, a little overwhelmed, but you know, I'm just gonna stick with my original plan. I'm just gonna wing it. Overwhelmed, definitely. I'm interested to see what it's like to actually start messing with it myself, but kind of weird, like I won't really be able to make the most out of the things I've learned. Really? Cool. That was a lot, but it wasn't. The only, I guess, intimidating part would be remembering what does what. So if you got no other questions, I'm just gonna step back. I'm gonna give you a half hour to tweak and beep and boop and twiddle. All right. And then whatever you come up with in that half hour, we'll go with it. Okay. Let's see how bad this sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you do the things that you did? So uh, starting out, I was trying to, I, I was, I think I wanted to play like a movie scene out in my head, but like one that either I was making up or one that I just thought was cool. Okay, so I like I, that. I was trying to do like a, a soundtrack score kind of thing, but then I started pressing buttons and mixing stuff, and then I was like, oh, this sounds really familiar. And I, it, to me, it sounded like um, the score for The Shining or Doctor Sleep is what it sounded like oh, to me. Oh, nice. So we'll see if that's what it sounds like, but. <laughs> well, for me, I couldn't wrap my mind around trying to change things before I started, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was really just playing around with the notes until I found something melody-wise that I thought was not important. <laughs> so okay. I recorded that first and then just started turning everything to see where it took me. and. The tempo was really fast at first and I didn't really like that. I had already kind of decided I was going to go more ambient than like beepy and boopy. Yeah. So the first thing I did was just slow it down on the tempo thing. Nice. And then I just started turning stuff until it sounded less robotic and more relaxing. And in the middle of doing that, I don't know if it's just because clouds has the little snowflake, but it started feeling really wintry to me. So I kind of just kept fiddling with things until it sounded more and more along that theme, like I was standing under snow, not like I really know what that's like being right. in Louisiana. I wanted to do something that was 
more you know like yeah happy fun then i started fooling with these knobs over here and then um i was twisting uh one of these i think it was the pitch yeah yeah that was the pitch and it, i turned it from high pitch to low pitch and it just got real scary real fast yeah and i was like holy crap and then it started sounding even scarier like you're talking about it sounded like hell um so i was like you know that's yeah. pretty cool i know how to play one song on the recorder and that song is Amazing Grace. And I was like, it sounds like hell, but let me play Amazing Grace in reverse. This is like, like, not Amazing Grace. <laughs> it's, it's like evil. This is unacceptable grace. Yeah, exactly. So now you've seen that even with just a brief crash course, people with little to no musical knowledge can make something that doesn't suck. So if you're on the fence about whether or not you should take that plunge, again, I would urge you to do it, provided it's something that you can afford to do right now. Thank you for watching. Uh, let us know what you thought of their patches down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I hope to see you again in the future. Have a wonderful day.